Well, for more on these emerging environmental leaders, let's bring in Monica Medina. Monica is the CEO of Our Daily Planet, the largest independent e-newsletter on the environment and climate change in the U.S. She's also an adjunct professor at Georgetown University. Welcome back. Thank you so much for having me. So as we know, October 11th marks the International Day of the Girl Child. Has, how has the role of young women when it comes to climate change and leadership, how has that changed over the years? Well, it's just incredible what Greta Thunberg has done in just a year in front of the movement. But it's been a women's movement for um, several years because women have been at the forefront of, say, the Paris negotiation where Christina Figueres took a, a, a leadership role. Um, I think it's because women are also disproportionately impacted by climate change. So it's something that women are attuned to and girls are attuned to. And so it, it's become something of uh, women have, take, have become the face of the movement right now, which is great. And, and expand on that, because a lot of people might not know just, just how disproportionately women and young girls are affected. Women and, and uh, children are affected um, more than anyone else. Seventy percent of the people who are be below the poverty line are women, and people who are below the poverty line are disproportionately impacted by climate change. So, for example, in a tsunami in Sri Lanka in 2004, three times as many men as women survived that incident. So it's, it's a number of factors. Women get um, left behind to take care of children and then are um, subsumed by the wave if it's a wave coming ashore. Um, often they are the ones who are tending to um, the crops, so they are the ones who are most disproportionately impacted when there's a drought. Um, same thing when it comes to gathering water. In many parts of the world, women have the primary role that is impacted by climate, uh, it, whether it's a storm or a drought. And why do you think we're seeing so many young girls now really stepping up their efforts on the climate fight? Well, I do think it, it, there is something about Greta Thunberg's leadership. You know, in the last year, she's empowered a lot of young people, but predominantly women and uh, young women. And I think it is because they see her as having an effective voice. And again, they are. Um, thinking ahead, they're more attuned to the issues of climate themselves. And so they are thinking about the future they want to create. And I think being encouraged by each other, there's something about feeling like you're not alone in the movement. And uh, that really does help to keep them coming forward in the movement. I Myself, with my young students at Georgetown, I mentored a young woman who started her own ocean alliance on uh, an issue you talked about earlier in the broadcast, on ocean plastics. And she now has an accelerator in San Francisco, and she's finding new companies that are going to tackle climate change and ocean plastics. So it's very exciting to see these young women stepping into these roles. Now, it's interesting, because on the one side, you, you have this, this encouraging, inspiring movement, but then there's also this incredible backlash, as we saw from, from Jade's interview, that, and sometimes it's coming from, from middle-aged men, but this criticism about sort of having young girls and children stay in their place on this issue. What are your thoughts on that? My thought is that this is the moment for us all to become more aware about climate change, and if women are leading the way, that's wonderful. There's a, a recent study that showed that countries with women leaders have much more effective climate policies than those that don't. So again, women leading gives the example that younger women need in order to feel confident and to push through that backlash. Um, and it's really, really wonderful. It's wonderful to see it. And it's certainly important to, to rally around uh, role models. We know that Greta Thunberg does receive a lot of attention, but you have a lot of other climate, young girl climate activists who, who don't get as much attention, especially when it comes to young girls of color. You have um, Little Miss Flint, Mari Kopeni, yes. and um, um, Autumn Peltier, who are clean water activists. Is there an issue, though, when it comes to sort of the inclusion, when it comes to girls of color activists who, who don't get the same amount of attention? We try in my, uh, in our Daily Planet, my uh, newsletter, to highlight people who come from diverse backgrounds in order to make sure that all the voices are heard. And I do think that's been something that um, even Greta Thunberg has talked about. Um, so it's important for women um, from all 
walks of life. And we've written about wonderful women who've come from, say, the native Alaskan communities to lobby in Washington, or um, young women from places like Flint or the Cancer Alley coming to Washington to talk to their leaders. And I do think the more that happens, the more it empowers others to do the same. And the young woman I was talking about before is a, is a dreamer who came to the US as an immigrant with her mother from Central America and decided that oceans was her passion and started this, uh, this ocean uh, accelerator. And uh, it's wonderful. She was a student of mine, and now she's an entrepreneur. So it's great to see. Certainly shows that there's certainly room for everyone to make a difference, no matter how small, as, as Greta was saying there. Thank you so much. So good to have you on. Monica My Medina pleasure. there, Thank CEO you so much. of Our Daily Planet and adjunct professor at Georgetown University.